Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. It's alleged the Vulcan bomber performed an illegal barrel roll. Is the military paying too much for small drones? EAA and IMC clubs join forces. I'm Brie Cross, it's November 6, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. A spokesman for the UK Civil Aviation Authority says the agency is investigating a possible illegal maneuver allegedly performed by the crew of the last known flying example of a Vulcan bomber. The BBC reports that the spokesman said that the maneuver, which was captured in video by an amateur photographer on October 4th, quote, did not occur during an air display. Although not normally allowed under its current permissions to fly, a roll is a benign maneuver and the Vulcan's maintenance support organization has confirmed that the aircraft is safe to fly, end quote. The video does not appear to show the Vulcan performing a roll maneuver. The CAA spokesman said that the restrictions put in place following the Shoreham accident were mainly applicable to air displays. This is the last year that this aircraft will be allowed to make in-flight aerial demonstrations. A former vendor of Prioria Robotics has filed a lawsuit against the UAV maker, saying it has bilked the U.S. government out of hundreds of thousands of dollars. The suit accuses Prioria of misrepresenting specs of the Maverick micro drone to the military and other government agencies and sold refurbished units as new in the contract. Motherboard reports that Prioria had contracts worth nearly $241,000 per Maverick system with the Air Force, Navy, Army, NASA, and other government agencies. In the lawsuit, it's claimed that the company is essentially selling a hobbyist drone to the government at government contract prices. In the filing, the lawsuit asserts that the Maverick, in some aspects, used technology and had capabilities similar to unmanned aerial vehicles that could have been purchased in a hobby industry channel or on Amazon. It was also pointed out that some hobbyist drones have more capabilities and could be purchased for about $5,000. After the break, EAA expands with a new service. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. Whether for business or recreational flying, maintaining instrument proficiency and staying up to date on issues dealing with instrument flying can be a challenge. Now EAA and IMC clubs have joined together to make instrument flying safe. IMC clubs was created by Radic Wisikorski and their purpose is to promote instrument flying, proficiency and safety. Along with IFR flying and monthly local chapter meetings, IMC Clubs offers a resource-rich website which promotes an electronic experience base. Effective November 2nd, the chapter resources and scenarios are now being produced and distributed as a new program by EAA, IMC, an experimental aircraft association subsidiary under a license from IMC Clubs International. This will provide resources for new and improved program offerings that will enhance and expand the impact of the IMC concept. To provide continuity, support, direction, and programming, Radek Wisikorski is now the Manager of Flight Proficiency with EAA IMC. Now a membership in EAA will entitle members to all of the services EAA offers, as well as EAA IMC Flight Safety and Proficiency Programming. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. 
When Jim got the chance to ask Michael Huerta if he knew that the FAA had the power to deal with a declining aviation industry, even without the mandate to promote the aviation world, this is what the FAA administrator had to say. Here is this week's barnstorming. You know, I think I'd want to start with the mandate uh, that you talked about, which was removed in 1996. Um, you know, it, when the FAA was first established, we did have a very specific mandate to promote uh, the interests of the aviation industry. And following a couple of horrific crashes in that year, uh, there was a feeling on the part of Congress that it had gone too far. And so that mandate to promote aviation was explicitly removed. And today, we have it really for only one segment of aerospace, and that's commercial space. Uh, but for everything else, there is an outright prohibition on promotion of the industry. I think it is fair to say that in the past, the agency has um, interpreted that perhaps too rigidly. You know, the example I'll give you is I was asked by a, a manufacturer's organization to provide a list of our contractors that we use to operate the air traffic control system and they, in turn, would use that list, you know, that we're suppliers to the FAA, you know, in their marketing activities uh, that they would take place throughout the globe because, you know, in their world, a supplier to the FAA is extremely important. And uh, that created a whole lot of problems for a lot of people in the FAA. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, finally I had to get involved and I said, guys, we're talking about a list. It is a list of who our suppliers are. This is factual information. This is not, you know, we're, we are not promoting any aspect associated with that. You know, and so, you know, I think it is fair to say that we have perhaps in the past adopted uh, too rigid a point of view on that. But I want to go back to what I talked about um, earlier. You know, it's through things like the compliance philosophy through the NAC priorities, the Next Gen Advisory Committee priorities that we've been focusing on as we deliver performance-based navigation, what has certainly been a high priority for me are what are things that are high priorities for the industry that we work with. And, uh, you know, and so Next Gen has got to be more about delivering, about more than just delivering technology platforms, it's actually got to be about delivering benefits and performance. So that's what we have been very, very focused on. Part 23, you know, we could rewrite part 23 just to clean up all the old language uh, in there and to make sure that there aren't inconsistencies, but we've actually taken it a step further. What we wanted to do is to be a performance-based rule that gives, I think, the industry what it wants, which is regulatory flexibility to innovate. And that's a much harder thing for us to do but it is something that we are very committed to doing. And so I think it, you know, the short answer to your question is yes, we do understand the relationship that we have with the industry. And I think that we do recognize that in order to support the industry in the future, we have to change how we do business. And that's something that I'm very, very committed to doing. After these messages, a Falcon 50 gets ADSB certified. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionic single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. 
With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Standard Aero has completed its first certified ADSB solutions for a Falcon 50 aircraft at the company's Augusta, Georgia MRO facility. The system incorporates CMD Flight Solutions ADSB DO260B upgrade and supplemental type certificate. Textron Aviation has added a dedicated aircraft to support customers throughout Europe. Based at the company's Dusseldorf Service Center, the Cessna Citation CJ3 Jet provides fast service and support for Textron Aviation customers during maintenance events at outlying European locations. FBO Partners, a fixed-based operator consulting firm, has signed an affiliation agreement with the National Air Transportation Association. This provides its FBO members with consulting services via NATA Aviation Solutions. The affiliation also offers training created exclusively for NATA members. Lockheed Martin has completed more than 27,000 hours of simulated flight time on an F-16 C Block 50 aircraft and is now analyzing the data. The aircraft is now in the teardown inspection and fractography phase of the test program. The National Business Aviation Association has announced dates and locations for the association's 2016 regional forums. NBAA says regional forums expose companies that don't currently use aircraft to the benefits of business aviation, bringing new entrants to the industry. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The NTSB has released its most recent findings related to its ongoing investigation into the October 29th airplane fire during taxi of Dynamic International Airways Flight 405. The report involved an incident in which an engine on the Boeing 767 caught fire on the ground at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. The NTSB found that the main fuel supply line coupling assembly had disconnected in the wing-to-engine strut above and behind the left engine. This coupling assembly has been retained for further examination. Examination of the left engine revealed no evidence of an engine uncontainment or other failure. The disconnected line poured fuel onto the engine, which ignited the fire. The lower inboard portion of the left wing, left engine cowling, and left fuselage center section sustained thermal damage. The fire did not penetrate the fuselage. All occupants of the aircraft safely evacuated with injuries limited to those caused during the evacuation. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday.